We are learning more tonight about one of the victims of that devastating Ethiopian plane crash. For over a decade, Derek Luigi and his family called Calgary home. Those who knew him say he made life so much easier for those coming from his native Kenya to Calgary. This afternoon, Derek Luigi's wife, Gladys, and his eldest daughter, Angel, invited me into their home to share their memories of a man whose life touched so many for the better. What was his best quality as a dad? Too many. Too many to answer. Um, I was telling a friend about this the other day, actually. I've never met anybody who didn't care um, about his reputation, as least as he did, in the sense of he didn't care what he looked like, what he wore, what kind of status he had. Um, his like, primary responsibility was to take care of the people that God put in his life. Mm -hmm. And I felt that so strongly more than anybody. He took care of his family, he took care of his friends, he took care of people that were in need. Um, and that was always his biggest priority to him. So there's, no, there's nobody who's ever exemplified that better than anybody that I've ever known. That was probably his best quality is he took care of his people. Mm -hmm. And tell me about his work in the community. I know he had a, a great role in the Kenyan community here in Calgary. Tell me about that. Yeah, it was the Kenyan Community Association in Calgary's president mm -hmm. for like almost three years, I think. And uh, uh, he did tremendous work connecting the community with the Calgary, making it making the Kenyan people more blended mm -hmm. to the community in Calgary. Um, he did things like river cleaning, like with when the mayor has that event like going on. It felt like he connected our country with Canada even more and oh, wow. more specifically with Calgary. So um, Derek thrived in that. Um, and another thing, if there were another community issues like people have laws, people have like. Uh, you know, sickness or something like that, Derek was always in the forefront. He would visit a person every evening if he has to. He would be in every event where people, life situations are getting to be too, too much. He would be there and wanting to get involved with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How is that community supporting you guys right now? With oh, your a loss? lot if you see all these people. Mm -hmm. Some of them slept and, you know, they don't care where they sleep, sit on the floor. Um, the the people just came right away. I don't know where all these people came from. Some of them I've not seen for a long time. They just yeah. came, and people start doing their thing. I've not thought of what they eat, but there is food. I've not thought of like we need to clean washrooms, but they've cleaned washrooms. Uh, my kids are now not feeling like cleaning up or like their room or something. They've gotten there and made the beds, and you know like everything is just running. And I feel their comfort and more specifically. They touch me, they touch us. They're a shoulder to cry on and they feel my pain mm -hmm. and my kids' pain. And they see that emptiness and they feel it and they feel it with us so we don't feel alone. Does it bring you comfort to talk about him and to mm -hmm. talk about the things you've learned from him? Does that help? It does help. It does help, and when I think when people visit, it makes a difference. Because then the conversation goes very naturally to like, what did he leave behind? What did he leave with us? Mm -hmm. So everyone is saying how he touched them, and that helps me with the grief.